Welcome friends to this lecture on components of integrated pest management. So, in this is in continuation with the concepts of integrated pest management wherein we have learned about how to understand the agricultural ecosystem, how to plan the agricultural ecosystem and how the insect pests are predicted and anticipated, how to work out the cost benefit ratio, benefit risk ratio and what are the weak links of the stages of insects and how best we can manage the insects and based on which we can work out the tolerance levels and how best the insect can be managed and ultimately it has to be reached to the farmers and the farmers have to be convinced. So, by the components or the tools of the integrated pest management, we can achieve the suppression of the insect pests. So, friends, these are all the tools or the components of the pest management like the cultural methods which are the on-farm practices which the farmers will be doing from the sowing to harvest and they are very conventional methods which have to be manipulated in such a way that the occurrence of insect pest is reduced and to create an unfavorable condition for the insect pest and a favorable condition for the naturally occurring predators and parasitoids to control the insects. Then the mechanical methods wherein the bigger insects or the infested parts, they can be destroyed and the insect pests are suppressed. And following the genetical methods wherein the genetically modified organisms are used for the insect pest control, followed by the biological methods where we use the living organisms like the higher animals that is the macro animals, the insects and the microbes like uh, viruses, bacteria, mycoplasma, nematodes to control the insects and by exploiting the behavior of the insects, we can attract the insects and we can kill them which are done by these behavioral methods. Then we can enforce certain rules and regulations and the central as well as the state levels by which the introduction, the spread and the damage of the insects are reduced which are uh, in the legal methods and after that ultimately we go for the chemical methods wherein we use the synthetic chemical insecticides which are the last resorts of the insect pest management. This is how it works the cultural and mechanical practices at the beginning which will prevent the insects and after that the using of the predators parasitoids coupled with periodical monitoring that is the pest surveillance and monitoring based on which the action has to be taken by the farmer based on the economic threshold level by using the chemical pesticides or by possibly using the biopesticides like microbials and botanicals coupled with other simpler methods which are available for the pest management will ultimately lead the suppression of the insect pests. And among all these methods, the chemical pesticides should be considered as a last resort because from sowing itself the farmer has to meticulously plant the crop that the occurrence of the insect pests are prevented by means of the cultural methods, sanitation methods, uh, destroying of the insects or the infested parts, releasing of the biocontrol agents and conserving of the biological organisms which are present in the field and providing a congenial atmosphere for their proliferation as well as the multiplication so that the insect pests are suppressed without any application of the chemical pesticide. In spite of all these things, if the insect pests increase in their numbers and they reach the economic threshold level, then the chemical pesticides have to be considered as a lost resort. Coming to the cultural control measures, these are the conventional methods in vogue which are practiced by the farmers from sowing to harvesting. It consists of regular farm operations in such a way that it either destroys the pest or prevent from causing economic loss. The regular practices which are done by the farmers have to be manipulated in such a way so as to reduce or avoid the pest damage to the crop and it is called as the cultural control. The very purpose of this cultural control practice is to make the environment which is less congenial or less favorable for the proliferation and increase of the pest on the one hand and on the other hand 
by providing the favorable conditions for the increase in numbers of the natural enemies. And how these cultural methods are done for controlling the insect pest? Starting from the preparation of nurseries or main field, one has to be so meticulous in planting the crop in such a way that the debris, the burns, the soil, everything should be clean and neat and he has to go for periodical summer ploughing which kills various stages of the insect pests. Many of the insect pests, they will be present in the ground either in a diapausing phase or a quiescent phase or a dormancy stage. When summer ploughing is done, these insects are brought outside and they are killed by the scorching sunlight as well as the predators which are occurring in nature. And there are different types of inputs. One is called as the monetary input where the farmer spends money and the other one is the non-monetary input wherein he spends his knowledge. Selection of clean and certified seeds such non-monetary input that he will apply his knowledge as to what seed has to be purchased which is resistant to a particular insect pest which is prevailing in that particular area. And he has to treat the seeds with different materials like fungicides or biopesticides before sowing and it will take care of the seed borne insects as well as the diseases because these systemic insecticides they go into the seed and during germination also they will go into the shoot system and root system of the plant and they will control the sucking insect for a period of up to three to four weeks and the selection of pest resistant or tolerant varieties it plays a significant role in the pest suppression and in the meantime when the farmer has a comprehensive knowledge of the periodical occurrence of the insect pest, he can very finely adjust the date of sowing and harvesting so that the critical period of the crop, it escapes the peak season of the pest attack. And crop rotation is also one of the cultural methods where the crops belonging to the same family are not grown continuously because the crops will be infested with the same pests and he has to change the crops so that there is not a continuous cycle of a particular insect pest. Proper, proper plant spacing also is important which makes plants more healthy and less susceptible to the pests. This is the summer ploughing. You can see that it will control the pest like the red hairy caterpillar which is a serious pest, the cutworms and the white grubs which will be lying in the soil and they are brought out and they are very easily killed by the scorching sunlight. Also in rice, it was found to be effective that is puddling periodically in the rice fields will control the mealy bugs which are serious pests of rice crop. Optimum use of fertilizers in the recommended form will also manage the insects because higher the nitrogen, higher will be the succulency of the plants and higher it will be prone to insect pests and diseases. More of potassium will provide the resistance to the insects. So, judiciously using the fertilizers, the insect pests can be suppressed and proper water management is also an important cultural practice wherein the periodical drying and wetting of the field will control different insect pests like the brown plant hopper, the case worms and different flies in different crops. Proper weed management is also responsible for suppression of the insect pests because most of the weeds are harboring the insect pests as well as the pathogens in the absence of the main crop. So once the main crop is sown, the nearby weeds, they will provide the inoculum for the main crop. So the farmer has to be so cautious that there should not be any weed in the crop during the nursery as well as in the main field which will suppress the occurrence of the insect pests. And the synchronized sowing on community approach, if the entire area is sown with a particular crop on the same time, then the crop will be at the same age and all the farmers will be able to carry out the management practices in a community manner so that the insect pests are prevented or suppressed from that particular area. And growing trap crops on the borders of the peripheries of the fields will attract the insects and these insects which are harboring on the trap crops can be destroyed and the main crop can be saved. For example, castor attracts this Bodoctra litura which can be sown in the uh, borders of different crops and the tobacco caterpillar can be easily controlled. Or seed, you can use the seedling treatment in the pest infested area. This is a very common practice. 
that is the cultural practice followed by the farmers. As we have discussed the water management, the International Rice Research Institute recommends the alternate flooding and draining of the field at a period of 5 days will control the world maggots, the case worms as well as the BBH, BPH and different dipteran insects. Seedling clip, clipping is also an important cultural practice because the rice stem borer has a behavior of laying the eggs on the tips of the seedlings. So, while pla planting or transplanting operation if the tips are removed then the eggs are easily removed from the crop and totally the infestation of this particular insect is prevented from the field. Different practices like the intercropping or multiple cropping where there are different crops which are grown in the same area, one pest will attack a crop and it may not be a pest of the other crop. So, its movement is prevented so that one crop will give you a better yield in case of the failure of another crop. And the more important thing is wherever harvesting is done, the harvesting has to be done close to the ground level because the plant parts which are left in the field, they will harbor the disease inoculum as well as the various resting stages like egg or larvae or pupa in the stubbles. And when these are left as such, they will go to the next crop and the next crop will have a source of inoculum and it will be seriously infested by these insect pests and diseases. So, to lessen the insect pests and disease incidence in the next season, the harvesting has to be more clearly done as close as to the ground level. And ultimately, the seed treatment as well as seed treatment with biopesticides and systemic insecticides will provide sufficient control for different crops for a period of 3 to 4 weeks from the initially occurring uh, uh, sucking pests as well as the termites. The soil solarization is also found to be effective in controlling the weeds as well as checking the soil bone pests and it also improves the soil fertility. Next method is the mechanical control wherever the insects are very clearly visible outside on the plants which are bigger in nature and wherever the plant symptoms are visible, we can easily destroy those plants and the plant parts to prevent the spreading of those diseases as well as the pests which is called as the mechanical control. It includes the removal and destruction of various stages of the insects like the egg mosses, big larvae the pupae and adults of insect pests and diseased parts of the plants wherever possible. Large number of mechanical devices are also available in the market which will destroy these insects or the stages of these insects. Different types of cages like the bamboo cage and bird perches are to be installed in the field by placing the parasitized egg mosses inside them for the conservation of natural enemies and withholding of pest species wherever possible. Because these bird perches they will attract the birds to sit on the perches and whatever insects which are present in the field will be devoured by these bird perches. Especially the barn owls, the um, crows and other birds, they are very effective in predating on these insects. Use of light traps is also recommended under the mechanical control for destruction of the trapped insects because most of the insect pests, they have a behavior of being attracted towards the light. So, during the dusk period that is the evening, if you keep a light trap, most of the insects, they will come and fall in the light trap. So, we can kill the insects which are collected in the light trap by putting water as well as few drops of kerosene and these insects can be killed. And in the meantime, it can also be used for monitoring the number of pests as well as the natural enemies which are present in the particular time in a particular field. <coughs> the use of roof for dislodging the leaf feeding caterpillars like the case worms and leaf folders are a very common practice which are followed in the rice crop by different farmers. Also, we can use the pheromone traps for disturbing the mating. We can moss trap the insects and ultimately we can kill the insects. This is a light trap which consists of a funnel and a bulb and a tray which collects the insects which can be used for monitoring the insects as well as the killing the insects for suppressing the insects. Many of the insects they are attracted towards yellow color. So, we can use a yellow pan trap like yellow sticky traps and yellow pan traps on which the insects will be stuck when they are put in the canopy level of different crops with which we can destroy the insects on one hand and we can monitor the insects on the other hand and we can plan 
the pest management strategies. Other practices include the genetical practices wherein we select the high yielding pest resistant and tolerant varieties for different crops. So, this will give very high yield in this, uh, even in the presence of the insects which is a very uh, favorable feature of different varieties. And the use of genetically modified seeds or the GMOs especially for the Bt cotton, it expresses the Bt gene or the crystal protein gene which will kill the insects. So, with no additional cost, the farmer will be easily able to manage the insects. And one more method under this genetical practice is the release of sterile males of insects in sufficient numbers in the field which will compete with the fertile males. The sterility in males is induced in the laboratory with uh, different materials or the chemosterilants or through the radiation. So, in this the sterile males will compete with the normal males in the field to mate with the females and ultimately they will not be producing any fertile offsprings and the generation is stopped and totally one particular area will be removed from the pest. This is very effective in the island conditions or small forests and small areas. Next one is the biological control. The name itself shows that it uses biological organisms. It is an important component of the integrated pest management strategy. It is the using of living organisms to control the insect pests wherein we use the parasitoids, the predators and pathogens to maintain the pest population at those levels which do not cause the economic loss either by introducing a new bioagent to a particular environment of pest or by increasing the effectiveness of those which are already present in the field. The parasitoids are a group of organisms which may live in or on other organism, for example, trichogramma, it is a egg parasitoid. It may be an egg parasitoid which attacks the eggs of the pests. It may be a larval parasitoid which attacks the larvae of other insect pests or it may be a pupal <coughs> parasitoid. Predators are bigger organisms which need large number of insect pests to complete their life cycles. The ladybird beetles, the golden eyes or the chrysoperla, they are the predators in the field which are the friends of the farmers. Not only the insects are used for controlling other insects, we can use the microbial organisms like the nuclear polyhedrosis virus, the bacillus thuringiensis, mycoplasma, fungi and entomopathogenic nematodes which are available even commercially in the market can be used for controlling the insects. As we see from times immemorial that is 1000 to 1300 CE. Many people they were using the ants for the biological control and later in 1888. Uh, it was a historical achievement that the cottony cushion scale in citrus orchard was controlled with the ladybird beetle that is the Rodonia, Rodelia cardinalis which is called as the Vedalia beetle from which the biological control gained the importance and to date we have large number of biological control agents which are available commercially which can be applied in the field and it serves the purpose of ecological purpose of the integrated pest management. The egg parasitoids, they complete their life cycle in the eggs of other insects and the larval parasitoids, they complete their larval period, uh, they complete their life cycle in other insect larvae and we have different species of natural enemies in any crop like the wasps, the echinomonids, the braconids, the myriad bugs, the trichogrammatids, the ladybird beetles, the taconids, epricania and the chrysopids. For example, the ladybird beetles, they devour hundreds and hundreds of sucking pests per day and they are very effective in controlling small soft bodied insects. The trichogrammatids are very small insects which feed on the other insect eggs and they complete their life cycles in the eggs of other species so that their life cycle is arrested. And many insects like the Chrysoperla carnea, they feed on small soft bodied insects like aphids, mealybugs jacids and white flies and they control these insects. Not only these insects, we have an array of microbial organisms like the Pacillus thuringiensis which produces the crystal protein toxin during its sporulation. It will kill the Lepidopterus larvae as well as the 
coleopterous beetles and now it is commercially available in the market also and the gene which is encoding the cry protein is present in different crops and they are marketed as the bt crops like the bt cotton bt tomato bt brinjal and now india is growing this bt cotton for controlling the bollworms we have the nuclear polyhedrosis viruses the cytoplasmic polyhedrosis viruses as well as the granulosis viruses and these viruses they multiply and they replicate in the nucleus or the cytoplasm of the insect pests and they will ultimately kill the insects which are very much safe to the environment not only the viruses we have different species of fungi which are controlling the insects like the bivaria bassiana metarisium anisopliae nemoria riley they will totally arrest the insects from their growth and development and they will disseminate the spores and it will control the insects in a particular area they are also commercially available in market and the entomopathogenic nematodes they are very effective in killing different species of larvae and different insects <coughs> this is an insect that is the green leaf hopper a spectacular example of the control of insect by the fungi that is the fusarium species has controlled the green leaf hopper that is the nephrotic viruses in the rice crop simply if you take one ecosystem for example rice especially for borers there are more than 72 natural enemies which include the trichogramma telinomas tetrastichus etc and especially for leaf folder more than 40 natural enemies are reported in the rice and for the hoppers we have more than 73 natural enemies like the anagras oligocyta citorinus etc simply if you have a congenial atmosphere for proliferation of these natural enemies very easily they will be able to control the insect pests of rice so that there is no need for the intervention in the form of chemical control and what are the methods by which we can manage the insects by biological control first one is the introduction wherein when an insect is accidentally introduced in a new area it will not have any natural enemies so in that case a new species of bioagent is introduced into a locality for its establishment against its host otherwise the augmentation is done wherein already existing biological control agents they are reared and they are repeatedly released by either lab laboratory rearing or field collected bioagents of the same species in large numbers so that they will control the insect population or they will suppress the pest population in that area this has to be done periodically so that these natural enemies they will not have much uh, traveling distance in the field so trichogramma or any other parasitoid they are released at a period of 10 to 15 days in the field to control the insects and they are also conserved in the field when these organisms are already existing in the field by providing congenial atmosphere and by manipulating the cultural practices they can be provided resting spaces as well as the food material so that they can increase in their number so that they can control the insect pests which are occurring in that particular area and they can keep the population of the insects below the economic injury level in india we have the biological control which is started in 1957 and it was given a form of all india coordinated research project on biological control during 1977 with 10 centers by the indian council of agricultural research this icrip was elevated to project directorate of biological control in 1993 and now it is called as the national bureau of agriculturally important insect resources in india so far 166 exotic biological control agents have been introduced of which 33 could not be released in the field and 71 recovered after release and six agents they provide excellent control and seven agents provide substantial control and four agents they provide the partial control these are some of the examples of the biological control agents like the egg parasitoids they complete their life cycle in the eggs of different insect species which belong to the order hymenoptera and the family trichogrammatidae also the family ceylonidae mymaridae they are also having the insects which are ex ex exclusively parasitic on the eggs of different species these are the larval parasitoids which belong to the family bethylidae like the goniosis 
or the braconids like the stenobrachon or the macrocentrus, cutisia, myosoma, stenobrachon, etc., which give sufficient and excellent control on different insects like the stem borers, the leaf folders, and various caterpillars belonging to the Lepidoptera as well as the Coleopterous insects. Next one is the behavioral control wherein we can manipulate the behavior of the insects. Organisms generally produce certain chemicals which will have either the intraspecific effect or the interspecific effect. Whenever they have the intraspecific effect, they are called as the pheromones. When it has or it elicits a response in different species, then it is called as the allelochemicals. Under the pheromones, we have two types of pheromones. One is the primer pheromone which gives the long term effort and the releaser pheromone which has a short term effect like it will be responsible for the mating that is the sex pheromones or it will be re responsible for aggregation that is the aggregation pheromones or alarm pheromones which will intimate the others of any alarm or any disturbance in the environment or they may be trial pheromones in the ants or epidiotic pheromones for <coughs> informing other insects for egg laying or the territorial pheromones to mate, uh, make the territoriality. And in this we can exploit the sex pheromone for controlling the insects by using the synthetically manufactured sex pheromones of different insects. We can monitor the insects in the field, we can trap the insects in the field and we can disturb the mating of the insects. So those pheromones with all, which are synthetically produced they are called as the parapheromones. These are some of the recommendations of parapheromones in different crops like rice, sorghum, groundnut, sugarcane, cotton, etc. Next is the legal control or the regulatory control by which there are certain rules and regulations at the state and the central level which will prevent the entry and distribution of different insects. This is the organizational chart of the Indian plant quarantine structure wherein the government of India by the Ministry of Agriculture has different centers that is the integrated pest management, plant quarantine, the pesticide regulation, the locust control and human resource development through the direct rate of plant protection, quarantine and storage which is located at Faridabad. These are the places where the plant quarantine Stations are located in India which are meticulously working to prevent the entry of different insects from different countries. <coughs> These are some quarantine regulations which are enacted under the Destructive Insect Pest Act of the 1914 through which different insects have been prevented from entering our country like the codling moth, the Colorado potato beetle, the cotton boll weevil, the European corn borer which are very dreaded pests in different countries have not yet entered our country due to strict quarantine rules which are present in the country. And last but not the least, we have to apply the chemical control for controlling the insects. The pesticides or the insecticides are the integral part of the integrated pest management system and they will play an important role in crop protection where there is a complex view of the pest problems. So one has to look for the pest population in the field by meticulously observing the field by means of surveillance and survey and work out the economic threshold level and once the insect exceeds the economic threshold level, the chemical control is applied in the form of human intervention. And one must understand thoroughly what is the type of insecticide which has to be sprayed, when it has to be sprayed and how it has to be sprayed to save the environment. Because the pesticides are two sided weapons, on the one hand it will kill the insects, on the other hand it will spoil the environment. So large number of chemical agents are available in the form of organochlorines, organophosphates, carbamates, pyrethroids, neonicotinoids, various newer molecules and botanical insecticides. And the farmer has to appropriately select the insecticide which is meant for a particular crop and a particular insect based on the economic threshold level so that he can suppress the insect pest on one hand and he can save the environment on the other hand. This is how the, these are all the tools of the integrated.
waste management by following these methods from sowing to harvesting as a project or as a scheme it will be very easy for the farmer to achieve a suitable pest management program thank you